I absolutely love MMOs. I've played them for the last 16 years of my life and enjoyed pretty much every single minute of it. But I've always been afraid of jumping into another one. When big titles came along like Wildstar, Guild Wars 2, all that stuff... I shied away, knowing about the thousands of hours that I poured into World of Warcraft, I was afraid to jump into another one and have that whole process repeat. I wouldn't be able to spend the amount of time that I wanted to to explore this game fully, or I was going to be playing MMOs until I was 70 years old, which I still might be. But... When I left World of Warcraft a little over a year ago and decided to actually try out another MMO in, in the terms of Final Fantasy XIV, I was surprised to find that from a mechanical level, which is how I've always looked at these games, how they started with this sort of World of Warcraft formula and then branched out to become its own thing. When people talk about Final Fantasy XIV right now, they don't really talk about the same things they would talk about when compared to WoW. They talk about the story. They talk about what has become the linchpin of that franchise, despite the fact everything else is there. They carved their own way and changed their content in order to suit what their play demanded and they're not the only ones to do it which is why we're doing mmo january which is mmo january february until i'm happy with it i decided to jump into four mmos because the new style of mmo has a lot of drop in drop out gameplay on the one day i'm out killing razageth i'm farming high end keys in world of warcraft the next day i'm crushing extremes in final fantasy and enjoying the story and i want to see how these other mmos have found their own path the ones that have been successful so we decided to add in guild wars 2 and destiny 2 as they've got brand new content coming out in the next couple of months and jump in and set ourselves a little challenge we will clear the current raid of these games and see what the experience is like we'll get to experience the leveling we'll get to figure out how the high-end gearing works in preparation for their current content and figure out how it all works out I'm going to come back to WoW and FF14 shortly, but now it was time to jump into Guild Wars 2. When Guild Wars 2 launched, I had that fear. I didn't want to touch it. My wife actually bought it and played it for a few weeks and said she really enjoyed it, but I looked at it like the devil. I didn't want to commit my time to a new MMO, especially one that just kind of looked like WoW. And that's what I saw with a lot of MMOs that were trying to take a piece of World of Warcraft's pie. They were all a little different graphically, had a little twist on the story maybe they were using a different intellectual property but when you look at the gameplay it kind of just looked like wow and i was like <sighs> if i want to play a new mmo it's got to be something completely different like my original mmo neocron which was much more fps and third person swing target focus that was really fun and a totally different experience and that's something i was looking for but now i'm feeling a little bit more free to try these out into Guild Wars 2 I went, completely blind. I know nothing about Guild Wars 2. I didn't know what the names of the classes were. I had no idea how anything worked. All I know is that this game has done very, very well, Has still has a ridiculously high amount of players into it, and does things a little different. I remember when Guild Wars 1 came out and their big tagline was a couple of things. No Holy Trinity. The classic style of tank, healer, and DPS will not exist in our game. Okay, well, how does that work? I need to find out. They also went with the idea that you buy the game and then there's no sub-fee. Buy the game and it will keep going. They do have a microtransaction shop. I have no idea what's in it. And I knew a couple of things from research and conversations that I've had before, such as dungeons have been removed. They're still there for the base game, but they stopped doing dungeons. Instead, they carved a different path that suited their playstyle, their players, in the name of something called Fractals. I'm looking forward to finding out what they are. As it stands right now, I don't know. So let's go along with this journey into Guild Wars 2. First things first, character creation. I rate this as a solid 7 out of 10. I wish I had known how much my character will appear up close and personal in cutscenes, but overall was really happy with this. I really, really liked that you could customize the color of your armor from the get-go. That gave you some idea of what was going to come later in terms of dyeing your armor and doing all those kinds of things, but also just allowed you to have a really comfortable looking character that is very important to many players from the outset. So I was really hoping that would go on. Next, I had to choose a class. I decided on the Revenant, and I did this based on reading the tooltips of what these classes do. As I was browsing through them, I was like, I know in the back of my mind that games that haven't updated this tooltip for a while 
are sometimes very out of date. And you read them and it's like, if you know about the game and you've played it for a while, you know that tooltip doesn't quite reflect how that character actually plays. But as I'm going in blind, and when I say blind, I'm not even going to be looking at my live stream chat while playing this. Now, I want to be clear on something. That's not how I would play this game normally, and nor is it how you guys would probably play the game. I won't be asking people in game about things that I don't know. Ordinarily, I absolutely would. I would Google things if I didn't understand them. I'm not going to do that. Now, the reason I'm doing that is I want to know how this game presents its information. And for clarity, I'm not sponsored to play Guild Wars 2, but ArenaNet found out that I wanted to play it and sent me copies of the game. So I'm going to give them the feedback that they probably want, which is how does this game present itself to a, character, a person just picking up this game for the first time in terms of how they present their information. So character creation, pretty good. Good 7 out of 10. Lots of customization, lots of tattoo options, lots of body type options, lots of ways of changing eye colors and all that kind of stuff. Your hair color, matching your armor, putting some decoration on there. Really appreciate it. Just uh, I just recreated the, basically the floor inspector from FF as close as I possibly could uh, because I kind of like and fall in love with that goofy face. All right, I've just seen it and I fucking hate you guys. The crawlers are here and you're all dressed as rats. <laughs> I actually hate you guys so much. I actually fucking detest you guys so much. I really, really hate you all. It's been five minutes. I'm not a rat. The first thing's first then, the zones. Let's go through those. They're really pretty. They're very, very pretty. The first zone I loaded into was called Holbrek, which gave me kind of Dunmoreau vibes, these snowy mountainous areas with some grassy verges on the sides. And the first thing I noticed is I'm not at a quest hub. The initial quest I got was very much what I would expect from any MMO. But then immediately I realized this is not how Guild Wars does its leveling. Instead, it's very much like a Ubisoft open world game. Now, don't be deterred by that. What I mean is there are scouts around with little telescopes on them on the map. And if you click them, they'll sort of unveil different areas and activities to do within them. Now, there is a map completion we'll get to later for each zone. You can complete every activity there. But what's more important is the quests are presented to you at random. I really, really like this. Because instead of going to an area, so if we look at it from a World of Warcraft style and an FF style where you go to an area and there's just a town with a bunch of quest markers, pick them all up and start looking for generally the most efficient route of doing those quests, which is how most of us play the game. What we're not doing is taking in what's actually happening for the most part. We'll stick with the main story, sure, but a lot of times it's like collect some 12 bear asses and things like that. That is absolutely not how Guild Wars 2 did it, and this was one of the most impressive things it showed me. Each zone, and uh, I had my uh, guys have a look at this, has roughly 60, 60 in each zone, random events that can occur. And these happen just by walking around and bumping into stuff. So by the time I got my first quest, which was, hey, go here and check this out, I had done passively four or five different quests, and these quests were pretty engaging for the most part they usually actually changed into a chain of events which i really liked bump into an npc who's walking towards a cave and you might see something on your map pop up saying hey you should probably look after this npc okay then you get the npc to the cave protected and safe and then the npc finds something of interest an archaeological dig some sort of tool some sort of experiment being carried out help them deal with this oh my god there's people who are prisoners here this is another quest and each one is just piling on experience each and every time you do it so you've basically done a full quest chain that you would pick up in any other game without having to return to an npc to say i did this part and i need to go back out again or return and do that part it just naturally flows into another and you also have the running risk of if you are lazy and this quest fails then you've maybe missed out on several other follow-up areas that go along with it. And this happens all the time. It's it's one of those games where you're trying to do a task and you're just constantly being waylaid. If you're not disciplined, you're constantly waylaid by different interesting things to do. You'll be turning into different creatures. You might end up in a drinking game. You're doing all kinds of different things. Now, not everything is wonderful for sure. I, one minor criticism I would have 
is the heart system to unlock NPCs. At first, I was really interested in this. There are these NPCs around that have a golden heart over them, and that means that you can gain some sort of favor with them by helping them out with their task. Perhaps they're a young boy who's collecting armor to build his snowmen or something like that. Okay, I'll go and collect the snowmen, and it's, it's a basic MMO quest, right? You do that, and that unlocks that NPC to sell you things. So I was really curious about this in the first few hours of playing the game. Ultimately, I stopped checking these guys completely, because every time I did, they basically sold trash. Like, a bit of food, some scraps of something, nothing that I consider personally worthwhile. Although it was nice to find out that experience bonuses do stack, and I have a fondness for that uh so that was really cool but ultimately i ended up doing them for map completion rather than because the npc was worthwhile to unlock and my fear at this point is and i'm talking this is i'm going to be explaining this from like my first day of play is that i'm going to miss something important because the game has kind of taught me not to bother checking these npcs anymore i checked the first 10 or 12 nothing of relevance and then I left it alone. That doesn't mean that all the map co map completion stuff is interesting. I was very curious what would happen if I 100%ed a map. Now, these have things like vistas. I was a little scared at these at first because I thought they were jumping puzzles. But so far, every vista has been pretty easily accessible. And usually, once you can see on the map where the empty icon is, it might lead you to something else that's interesting as well. That's kind of how they bait you to where events are going. And I will say one thing for the events mechanic... Because they're constantly going and these chains kind of continue, which keeps you in the area for a while. And also, people who wander in can just join in at any section of the event. You don't have to have done part one. If you're on part three of five and people just turn up for some reason because they're looking for a vista or perhaps they're unlocking a point of interest, which is in the map, they can just join in as well and jump in. What you find is a much more full world. Rather than quest hubs where you're going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards all the time, you have a much more full world because people are being kept in these areas naturally and through choice because they want to complete their quest and more people are rocking up at different periods of time and then fulfilling the quest out along with you, which I thought was very cool. But coming back to these points of interest, what I found was that sometimes they were a little tricky to locate without doing full full map exploration and my brain was thinking like what happens if we do a full map completion is there a goal and i could see an icon of a little chest so i spent the first little while surprisingly i never expected to come into guild wars 2 and be like oh i'm going to complete the first map uh and unlock it which was pretty good i got some nice rewards and there's some rng which leads to some loot crate type things not that they give you like power but customizables from their store that you can randomly get out of these chests, which is a little incentive. Uh, not too bad at all. But overall, I found the, zone, the zones really good. Let's talk about one of the elephants in the room that I didn't enjoy, but mainly it's because it could just use a coat of paint, ArenaNet. It really could. It's their UI. It actually reminded me of the old Star Wars RPGs. It's a very retro UI, and it was... <laughs> off-putting and i think it would be very off-putting to any modern players who come into that game to check it out and be like oh this reminds me of like an old windows basic rpg from back in the day because it is that style and it could easily be fixed with just a little bit of graphical improvement the functionality is totally fine for like the system settings and things like that it's just got that old school feel of the little cross box in the top and you can see it yourself as uh, a little bit off-putting but that wasn't the only element of the ui i didn't like a few hours in inventory became a real problem now thankfully because i got the epic edition which contained the expansions i got given a bag in my mailbox because i'd bought that game which i hadn't they provided it for me not everybody's going to get that especially when trying out the base game which is free that's not going to happen and you are given very limited backspace <clears throat> and what they do is kind of constantly flood you with loot it was a lot and i honestly didn't know what to do with it there were so many items that i got and I, I one thing i loved about the gearing was that in some items you could choose the stats you want on them and the stats are very self-explanatory uh is uh, that's really nice it's like you could customize your gear from the get-go to be like hey this i want this to be crit and hit or whatever it might be or crit and double damage or just strength and crit i got to choose that myself um was that my inventory was just filling up and for no explicable reason that I could find, some items I could salvage and could turn into resources and stuff like that. 
some I could sell to vendors, and then there were some items that I just couldn't do anything with. They just sat in my inventory. Eventually, I found a bank and decided to put the stuff in there because I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know whether it was something that was worthwhile, but this was like level 5 gear, so it can't really be worthwhile. And ultimately, I know I can send this stuff to alts, which is a big, pl a big plus, is that you can get extra gear early in the game that you can actually send to your alts, so they start with gear. Uh, that's pretty cool, even though gear is not a particularly difficult thing to acquire, but at higher levels, that'll certainly be worthwhile. And I got very confused by this and ended up keeping this stuff in my bags all day, and I still don't know really what to do with it. On top of that... <laughs> On top of that, I can't buy any bags because my typical solution, obviously I'm not playing like I don't know how games work, would be to go to the auction house and see if I could pick up some decent bags, like for cheap. Like typically from most MMO experience, the the best bags are expensive. The ones that are below that are not that expensive at all. And you, you can probably usually triple or quadruple your inventory space for just a few coppers. I was prevented from doing this because my account was new. And that was a real kick in the teeth. And currently I have to wait four days before I'm able to use the auction house. Now I understand why this exists to stop bot farmers and spammers and people abusing the auction house and all those kinds of things. But ah, as a new player, it's a real handicap. It's a real handicap. There is some cool functions in there that I found, such as being able to send all my resources to the bank without actually having to go to a bank. So if I had crafting materials, I could get rid of those, and then I was just left with basic stuff. On top of that, I have no idea what to do with trophies. My bags are full of trophies. And I don't know what they're for. I can't sell them. I can't salvage them for the most part. I don't know what to do with them, and it's really bugging the hell out of me. I'll figure it out, but I have all these trophies, which I assume are for reputation or to gain some standing with somebody. I mean, a trophy, when you call something a trophy, there's an essence of permanence to it. So, I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Another issue that I found out with the UI, and again, this is all coat of paint stuff, uh, is that my camera is super annoying. I had the initial issue that you definitely get in World of Warcraft. I don't think you get this in FF, where your camera, if you start walking, your camera auto-adjusts to being behind you. And I hate that. I really hate that. So going into the settings, I found that I could turn that off. However, when you're on a mount, you can't. At least I seemingly can't find the option for it. So although I've turned it to the way I like it, which is just let me control the camera, thank you. Um, on your mount, you can't. But on the good news is, they gave me a mount nice and early. I got a mount, I think I was level 20 when it gave me, it just gave me a mount to get around on. And I'm told, I haven't found it yet, the mount system is fantastic. I unlocked something called Masteries, but it said it's locked till level 80, which I believe is the level cap. Uh, so I don't know where that goes, but I got myself a juicy raptor and I could instantly change his color and stuff like that from uh, the beginning. So it was uh, that was really cool. Let's talk about the gameplay a little bit. So I was pleasantly surprised. This is one of the joys about going into these games blind because it started off a little ominous. But first of all, the combat was really fast surprisingly fast one thing i didn't know is that my actual skills on my bar uh came from which weapons i'm holding and my revenant could dual wield which means if i put a mace in my main hand i get three abilities that i use with my mace and if i put a sword in my off hand i get two abilities i can use with a sword for another two skills if i swap them around i get different abilities again if i equip a two-hander then i get a another set of abilities so uh, what and then you got then i got the ability to actually weapon switch so very lost arky vibes uh for those of you who played lost ark recently where i had five abilities that were with my main hand offhand and then i could equip something else in my in another weapon slot and then i could swap between them in combat uh, so I equipped a staff, which gave me some healing abilities to go with it. Along with that, my Revenant actually takes the power of legendary heroes. Because at first I thought, is this MOBA style? Because I only had five spells, and then I could see a bar where I would get another five or four. So I was like, do I only get nine abilities in this game? That feels really low, but perhaps it's a much more casual based MMO, in which case we just don't need a flood of abilities like we'd find in WoW and FF. And that's not really the case, in fact. What you have is a really, really intricate system of being able to, at least on my Revenant, of swapping weapons, which gives me access to 10 abilities alone. 
and then I could swap my le legendary uh, hero on the fly as well and gave five abilities with one and each. And I could swap them both independently in combat. So I can have my standard weapons with any of my legendary heroes. I could change my weapon and still have legend heroes. Giving me uh, 20 abilities that I could swap between on the fly. Now, which that meant I got hero points, which are talent points, essentially. Now... Hero points are something that reminded me a lot of Star Wars The Old Republic, is that there are he hero challenges out in the open world which will give you extra hero points to spend in the talent tree as well as the ones you gain while leveling up. This may be a little concern because so far I haven't found a way to respec. <laughs> so I assume that's somewhere in the game, but I don't know where it is. Uh, but at the moment... I basically going with my gut instinct similar to our blind Path of Exile playthrough, uh, which is I'll go with what sounds good, and basically I'm going with anything that increases my damage. Well, how this will min-max on our goal to clearing the raid, I have no idea. I'm also a little concerned I'm definitely putting points in which I uh, consider dog shit at the end game. They might be. Uh, but I think it was very cool is that you could just hold your points and spread them out wherever you wanted to go. Uh, that was really interesting, and I, I just... I'm filling out my tree as best I like. I like that we have multiple choices of builds, which I seemingly can uh, re equip a couple of them at a time. Where that system will take me as we get to higher level, I don't know, but I certainly wasn't bored. Very fast-paced combat. Super surprised. I was expecting something slow and much more ready. Not the case at all. At least with the Revenant, is I found the combat to be not quite World of Warcraft level, but better than ff and i'm a fan of big combat i'm a fan of fast-paced combat uh so that was definitely very very interesting haven't tried underwater combat yet i accidentally found this by walking in a river is that i can fight underwater i don't know what that's going to be like i keep picking up things that let me breathe underwater and spears to fight underwater and tridents so i will get back to you on how that one works i what? hate this so fucking much i hate this so much Hey everything. Hey everything. <laughs> Get out of the way. So one thing I did unlock though as I got a little further into the game was daily quests, like end game daily quests. I'm going to try and fill these in in the next couple of days and see whether or not this even at this low level it starts giving me end ish rewards. That would be really curious if that happens. And it might be something you want to do. At least it'll probably give me a lot of XP. And I suppose we should talk a little bit about leveling here. Because it's obviously the, one of the bigger put-offs that people have about starting an MMO. It's fast. I mean, a couple of cool things. One... Leveling seems really easy, and literally everything you do in the game gives you an abundance of XP. There's tons of experience boosters, uh, such as food, consumables that are just lying around that can boost you up. Uh, every few levels, I kind of got a token that was just a reward that allowed me to double my experience for a couple of hours, something along those lines. One thing that's really, really interesting that I did not about, know about this game is every single thing you do from day one is scaled. You can cap your character in the first zone by running events and stuff. At no point, and this was a little odd, did the game try and push me to go to a different zone. It was completely at my disposal where I wanted to go. If I wanted to spend 10 hours in the, the first zone, that's fine. I can cap my character there just fine. Everything scales so that I get just as good a rewards for doing that as doing something else. I also found out that on certain events, if you sort of perfect them, it basically doubles the amount of experience you get, and I got an entire level just from doing one event because we happen to do it really really well and i just what i ended up doing was i 100 percent of the first zone which got me some reasonable rewards for doing that and then i kind of opened the world map and just kind of picked where i wanted to go to shake up the environment i wanted to see what different environments were like so i just kind of pick and chose where i wanted to go do i want to and if i found a zone i liked i started working towards 100 percent it this is a really nice way of leveling i have a fear this is going to get tedious later on because it is at its core, sort of Ubisoft busy work completion. You know, get vistas, get points of interest, clear all the hearts. And some of the hearts take a lot longer to complete than is necessary. Uh, but ultimately, I'm kind of curious how I feel about this in a couple of days. For now, not just having straight quest hubs has been really, really nice. Uh, that was pretty cool. And also the game regularly asking me if... To, again, this idea of keeping players together was really cool. And occasionally the game would ask me uh, if I wanted to move to another shard that had a fully higher population. Because the shard I was currently on, people had logged out, people had moved on to different zones, and there weren't a lot of players in it. So it's like, hey, 
we're going to move you over in an hour anyway. But if you want to move over now to a zone that has got a load more people in it, that would be cool. And that worked out really well when I eventually went to try a world boss. World bosses, uh, as everything in the game is scaled, you can do world bosses from day one. And I did. I had no fucking clue what the hell was going on whatsoever. <laughs> I had no idea. And that's always back down to a UI issue. Is At some points, I had so many buffs from other players. And they're all tiny sort of icons. I have no idea what they do. Uh, it's one of the things I think a lot of MMOs are guilty of. Uh, in fact, nearly all of them are, is... Group buffs are great, but there's no clear understanding of what they are, and the UI isn't usually great at telling you what they are. And there's, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, because you know later on when you're experienced and seasoned with the game, you'll know what these debuffs are regardless. Uh, so there's... It's it's difficult. It's a difficult boundary. It's like, hey, we're giving you all these buffs, and I'm like, well, I have no idea what the fuck they are. Uh, alternatively, uh, do they stick them in your face when later on in the end game you know what they are just by a glance? Uh, that would be a really difficult thing. One thing I one criticism I would have though is the game has not given me any multiplayer stuff to do. I am doing stuff multiplayer. People are joining the events. We obviously did world bosses with a lot of people, but I've had no dungeons. I know they exist. I've had no group quests. I've had nothing that sort of let, wanted me to interact with another player directly. Uh, some people will really like that. I like player interaction in my MMOs. It's one of the reasons I really like Dragonflight's new working uh, work order system. Uh, but yeah, so far so solo is what I'd say. So far so solo uh, to see where that goes on. But that's been nice. The thing I want to close on here is actually the story. So, I'm assuming and that the story of Guild Wars 2, at least for the base game, which is where I am right now until I reach level cap, is the story that was there from the original, and it shows. Your character is voice acted. My initial reaction to that was, oh cool, my character is voice acted. And I do not want to bash anybody's work, but I do not like the voice actor for my character, and it actually is actively making the game worse for me. <laughs> Congratulations. You're officially press ganged into the gear warband of Silver. Your behind is mine until we recover the iron. Absolutely Rose. not! What? I'm no soldier, but a debt is a debt. What? Honor demands I repay. What's my first duty? Escorting a supply caravan. Meet us on the road near Tiger. I tr I played it for a good seven or eight hours at this point. We're going to continue to play, but so far, every interaction I've had with my character has gotten worse and worse. Might makes me right. And I'm really not liking it. It's been a big turn off for me. I might even disable it, but at the same time, I kind of like I, the other voice actors. So I'm not sure if I can disable just my own uh, or whatever. That would be interesting to see what's going on. The story is not good, uh, at least now. Um, I am aware that this story probably gets better in the later expansions, but the story is not good. Um, it's a little childish. It reminds me of actually my first interaction with Destiny 1 uh, when I decided to play that and I was looking forward to it and the story was very weak sauce, at least at the Destiny 1's launch. And I was like, oh god, this is... I hate to use the word cringe, but it did feel a little cringe. Um, it feels a little childish. Um, the story I had of... I, it, dude where's my car was essentially the story beat that we were on is apparently my character got very drunk uh with a char one of the werewolf type creatures and they drove the cart somewhere and they can't remember where they parked it uh after a very sort of tenuous spurious claim that what somebody thought they saw the cart uh near somewhere we went and butchered the entire village to look for the car and we murdered them relentlessly. And then we went and destroyed the dam to squash any living life out there. It was just like this. This if you if you it was a story that if I didn't think about it, okay, we're just killing a bunch of enemies. It's fine. It's an MMO. It's one of those stories that if you think about it for more than thirty seconds, it's like, oh god, this is gross. <laughs> this is really bad. So the story's not great so far, and the voice acting of my character, not anybody else's, is not good. Um, and I'm hoping that pick, picks up at some point. I really am hoping that picks up at some point. But that's where we are after day one. And this journey, so far, I'm very much enjoying it. Like, the gameplay, the zones, world bosses, they've given me a lot in the first seven hours of this game. And I'm going to throw a lot more in it and see where this journey takes us on our missions to clear this raid. But so far, so good. Criticism, I think, is fair. Uh, not everything's going to be perfect. What I'm really looking forward to next is, one, figuring out what the 
trophies do because i have no idea um and finding a dungeon i really do crave some multiplayer action now to see how that goes i want to know what that's like but as i sign off uh as i logged out after my first day of playing i just unlocked the lfg system which means i probably can find a group for something and that will be my next stop in our guild wars 2 adventure but we have more games to come uh we have destiny 2 is going to be on the menu but maybe we're going to look at elder scrolls as well uh we don't want to overburden it too much but uh any of your suggestions are always welcome thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you again bye bye